our Bible lesson for this morning is in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 12 to 20. We're on our journey throughout the Gospel of Mark. So, chapter 1, verse 12 to 20. At once the Spirit sent him out into the desert, and he was into the desert forty days being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said, the kingdom of God is near, repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father CBD in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Father, help us to understand your word this morning. We pray that the Spirit will work in our minds and our hearts and help us to understand what you have to say to us. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. Uh, I have someone here that you need to see him before you leave today. It's very important. Everybody here needs to see him and, 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 and see what he has to say because he has some important things for each one of us. And he is here in an important mission, so I'm going to bring him right away. Tickets! 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 Do you have your ticket? Do you have your ticket to heaven? Do you? Do you have your ticket to heaven? I hope you have. I know you have your ticket because I'm here. Because the heavenly bus will come shortly and if you don't have your ticket, you're going to get in trouble. So I'm here to help you to get your ticket in order so you can go to heaven. And, and the best part, the best part, I know that some of you are already looking for the ticket somewhere there. Yeah, you better start looking for the ticket. Because it's very important that you have the ticket ready. Because they have any bus anytime. We stop outside and we're going to... Get in and go to heaven. Now, while we're here waiting for the heavenly bus, we're going to have some entertainment for you. We're going to have some music. Nice music. Yes. Um, we're going to have some, uh, the pastor will bring something very nice about heaven, how it's going to be your house day. Thank you. 
And this is what is in our minds sometimes. And sometimes we do not confess that, we do not say that, but we behave like that. We behave that we're saved, and then heaven comes, and there's this period in the middle, we do nothing, just waiting for that wonderful day. day. And, and that is the challenge of the church today. Because people, they don't think that they have anything to do between those two events. And, and that is the problem that we face. People believe that, well, I was baptized. And they believe when they baptized or they profess their faith, they think that this is it. I did it, didn't I? Yeah. I baptized and I, and I, and I profess my faith and, and that is the end. No, it's not the end. That is the beginning. That is the beginning. And we need to understand that. We are not saved only to get out of hell and go to heaven. We're saved to do something while we are here. We have a service to do. We have a ministry to do. Right now, every one of us, if you believe in Christ, if you are a follower of Christ, if you were baptized, if you made your profession of faith, you have a ministry. You have a work. You have a work to do. You have a ministry. Turn to someone beside you and say, you have a ministry. You have a ministry. Yes. Now turn to the other side and say, you have a ministry. All right. Now, all of you, tell me, you have a ministry. I have a ministry. All right. You have a ministry. Yes. All of us. All of us. And not only us, Jesus also has a ministry. And this text here helps us to understand that Jesus, right after the baptism, he started, he begins his ministry. And we need to understand that this is what happened right after your baptism, right after your profession of faith. You start your ministry. You start learning. The text help us to understand that. And, and the text help us to understand the phases of the ministry. Jesus went to three, in the text that I read, Jesus went to three different places. And those places, they help us to understand the phases of his ministry. And the phases that we are going to go through. The phases of our ministry. So let me share with you all those phases. The first phase is the first place and the phase is the desert. And I call it preparation. Preparation. That is the first step or phase in our Christian ministry is the desert. Jesus went to the desert. It's a preparation phase. This is why I believe the desert illustrates preparation. Because if you have to study, you have to pray, you have to fast, you have to face the Satan, you have to face wild animals. Everything that Jesus went through, it was a training. You have a ministry and you need to be trained. And trained sometimes is hard, it's dry, we get tired. Sometimes we think, what am I doing here? It's so dry here. There's nothing for me to do. It's a place for struggle, spiritual wrestling, temptations, all that kind of stuff. Jesus went through. And we're going to go through anyway. We're going to go. And it's interesting that the text that we have here says that the, the Spirit at once, right after the baptism, that wonderful situation, that one wonderful occasion, the voice from heaven saying, this is my son, whom I love. Right after that, Mark says, that once the Spirit sent him. The Spirit sent him. It's the same thing with us. When we become Christian, when we make a profession of faith, when we are baptized, when we 
decide to follow Christ, the Spirit will send us to a place where we can be trained. And we can learn the Bible, we can learn how to pray, how to fast, how to abandon, how to do everything that we need to do. We're going to face struggles, going to be dry, all that kind of thing. And we need to understand that. We're going to find ourselves in the desert because it's not fun sometimes. There's no food. There's no special music. There's nothing. You have to do it by yourself sometimes. You have to do it in a small group with people that are willing to help you to grow. And Mark said that angels were there with you, but it was a tough, tough time. Preparation. That's the desert. The second phase. And the second place that Jesus went was the cities. That is proclamation. That is proclamation. That is the second place. So you were trained. You learn how to do it. You learn how to serve. You learn how to do how to talk with people. You pray, you fast, you face the temptation, all those kind of things. Now you have to go to the cities and start talking with people, telling your testimony, telling them about Jesus, about the kingdom of Jesus. This is what Jesus said. Jesus went to all the cities in Galilee, one by one, and the message was very short and urgent. Repent and believe. The kingdom of God is near. Repent. And it was short. It was, it was boom. It was a lot of people. And when you have a lot of people, you cannot keep talking like I am doing right now. No, you're not going to get they're not going to learn more. The city is the proclamation. The proclamation needs to be short, direct. And the mental response. This is what Jesus did. How he's going to reach out to a, a, a large population. He's just keep going, keep going, keep talking here, there, here, there, and keep moving. And he did that. He went through all the cities. All the places. And the message was short. This is what we, we should learn how to do that with Jesus. How to, to tell our testimony, how to tell about us, about God, about the relationship, for what happened in our lives, and, and use the conversations that we have and here, there, everywhere. And now we have internet, we have videos, we have Facebook, we have all those YouTube and all those kind of things that we're gonna use and we're using and we need to use better. More because we can put something good out there to reach out people, but in the other way, we're not going to be able to do it. Proclamation, proclamation. Jesus went where people were and find them. He found them where they are, what they're doing. I have a message about the kingdom of God and they need to receive that message and they need to respond to that message. That message needs a decision right away. So proclamation, that's the second phase. So we're trained and now we can talk about our life, our experience with Christ, what He did, and we don't need to tell the whole story. We can just catch a few words, a few minutes and just tell them friend, neighbor, someone around us about what Jesus is doing. All right. Now we have one more phase. And I call the shore, the beach. And I call it the production phase. The production phase. Jesus had three years and a half. He needs he needed to multiply what he was doing. He could not do it, the whole thing by himself. He knew that. So he went to the beach, to the shore, and start calling disciples. Start calling people. Peter, and John, James, all, all the others. Because he needed to train them 
so they would do what he was doing, production. In the largest kingdom. This is what discipleship will do in our lives. And will help us to multiply. Now Jesus multiplied himself. He's not there anymore. Peter is there. John is there. James is there. Andrew is there. Matthew is there. All the others, they're there. And they're all over the place. And then Paul and all the others and the next generation and all the others. And he multiplied himself. And this is what we need to do. And the process is the same. Training. They went through training with Jesus. And then Jesus sent them to proclaim. And then when Jesus left, they did the job. Production. They were workers. And, and it's interesting because Jesus talked to them like they were, yeah, you, you are fishermen, so I'm going to make you a fisher of, you're a fisherman, and I'm going to make you a fisher of man. You're not going to fish, fish, you're going to fish people. They got the idea. They understood what they were supposed to do. They're going to bring people to the kingdom. This is our work to bring people to the kingdom. Sometimes we think that no, we need to bring people to the church. Yes, but they need to be in the kingdom first. That is most important. And we need to understand. And each one of us needs to go through that process. Maybe you are in this process. Maybe you are being in the face of challenge, being challenged to be a disciple, to learn, to, to grow in your faith, to learn how to do things in the kingdom of God, how we're going to help people to learn about Christ. You need to do that. We have to have the willingness to follow Him, obey him and to serve him. As you can see, every Christian must go through these three phases. Every one of us. Every one of us. We need to be trained. We need to proclaim. We need to produce. We need to leave someone behind that will do what we could not finish or we could not do. We need to train some. We need to help some to continue the work that God put in our hands. Jesus did that. The apostles did that. And we should learn with them. We need to do that. After we become Christians, we have to be prepared and we start to proclaim, share the testimony with people around us. And finally, we need to start to help other people to do the same thing. We need to help other people to do the same thing. Help them to learn how to pray, how to serve, how to get involved, how to proclaim, how to do those things, how to participate and get involved in the church, and all those things that we do. We need to help someone to do those things. It's very important. So all those phases we need to go through. And I challenge you to find your, your place where you are right now. Maybe you said, well, I didn't know that I had to do that. Well, then it's, it's time to start. It's not too late. Why you were here? The bus did not come yet for you. So why you were here, you have a work to do. When the bus comes, then it's done. But not, not yet. Not yet. You still have things to do. Get ready. Roll your leaves. And get busy. Let us pray. Father, we pray that the Spirit will help us to understand this message and put in our hearts the desire to be trained, to proclaim, to produce in your kingdom. We pray in the name of Jesus.